Hi, I'm Chris. I'm from Xenocron, and I'm going to try to help you set up your next OBD1 ECU nitrous setup. Uh, as a tuner, I see a lot of customers come in each day, and their nitrous systems are just about 90% of the way finished, and they always need that extra little help with wiring, setup, um, plumbing, etc. We're going to try to help you get it set up 100% the first time. We're going to show you two different ECUs. We're going to show you a Honda S300. We're also going to show you a Neptune RTP. Both use Honda OBD1 ECUs. We're going to run through the components and we're going to talk about some things to do uh, for checks before bringing your car to the tuner. So let's look at the components. <coughs> we have ECU with the Honda S300 installed. It's hooked up to an engine simulator, which will give us um, basically the simulation of a running vehicle. We have a nitrous arming switch. We have a purge uh, momentary switch. You can hear it click. That's for the uh, purge solenoid. We have a couple relays. We have one relay that goes to the purge solenoid and a second relay that goes to the actual nitrous solenoid. Both re relays are from the same power source and both are fused. Important to put a fuse in your wiring. Okay, a lot of this looks fairly complicated. We got power and ground going to the ECU here. And lastly, from the nitrous solenoid relay, we have a trigger to the ECU. It is on pin A20, which is the purge control. This is uh, a ground output or a low side output from the ECU on pin A20, and we'll show you how to set that up. And then the input to the ECU is from the nitrous arming switch. This is going to the brake switch, and this is a 12 volt input to the ECU to tell it when to arm the nitrous system. Okay, what we have here is just a generic Type R base map built from the file new section of the Honda S Manager software. And we've gone and we've set up the nitrous controls. We go to parameters, we go to nitrous or aux1, and we turn the function on for nitrous control. We set up our input which is our D2 pin brake switch. That's our 12 volt input that we have off the nitrous arming switch we showed you earlier. <clears throat> we go to the output. This is what turns the nitrous solenoid on when the ECU wants to turn the nitrous solenoid on. In order to turn the nitrous solenoid on, it needs to see an input as on, your arming input, and then it has to meet a variety of conditions. Okay, The conditions that Honda gives you is a minimum and maximum engine speed, an engine load window, a minimum throttle position that must be exceeded before it turns on, vehicle speed parameters, there's an air temp uh, grade out here, and water temperature. What you'd wanna do is set this up for safety reasons to only be in a normal operating temperature of water temperature, and you'd also want it to turn off if the vehicle got too hot. The other thing you can do with vehicle speed is you can either turn on your nitrous from the launch or maybe you want to wait until the end of first gear so you don't start nitrous until vehicle speed reaches 40 miles an hour or whatever arbitrary number you come up with. For now we're going to set it to zero. We also don't want it to go on unless we're under load, higher load, and we only want it to go on under full throttle. So maybe set up your throttle percentage to 80% plus. Your RPM window is when it's going to turn it on in between. Uh, you don't want to set up too much nitrous too low on a Honda, or your odds may not be happy, but for display purposes, uh, this should be pretty sufficient. Right now you can see that our RPM is above 4,000, so that's within the window. Our coolant temperature is at 166, so that's within the, the range. The air temp is grayed out, so that's not going to be a problem. The only thing we don't have right now is throttle position. Okay, the first thing we have to do is arm the system. Watch the nitrous arm indicator. That's me turning the switch on to arm the system. That sends a 12 volt into the ECU that tells it to be armed based on our input that we set up. Under conditions, the only condition that is not met currently is the throttle position threshold right here. So as soon as it goes up above 80%, you'll hear the solenoid click. That's the ECU turning on the nitrous relay based on the parameters that we set up. 
This is us just testing, but for it to also work in a dry system especially, not necessarily a wet, but in a dry system, you'll also want to add some additional fuel through the fuel injectors, and you'll want to do some timing retard as well. The ECU will do this only when it's on. So that way you can run the car naturally aspirated with no nitrous on all the time without messing with your normal fuel and ignition maps. And it will only turn on the additional fuel and, and remove the timing that it needs to remove while the nitrous is on and spraying. The next thing I'd advise that you do is flow your nitrous system. Uh, you wanna make sure that there's no leaks. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn on our bottle sitting here after we've already checked that everything is tightened and make sure there's no leaks. I do hear a leak. Where, I don't know. So I'm gonna tighten down where I hear the leaks. We're good there. Check for leaks by the solenoids. Don't hear any, don't feel any. If you feel a leak, it'll be cold. There's no leaks from the bottle all the way to the solenoids. Next, we'll purge the system, which will bring liquid from the bottle all the way down to the line to the purge solenoid. The purge solenoid should be somewhat near where your nitrous solenoid is to chill the line and to bring all the liquid and fill it completely in the line so there's no air pockets. Here's a purge. Okay, no leaks, everything looks good. Bottle pressure is okay. So the next thing we'd wanna do is weigh our bottle. Take a decent scale, put the bottle on there. Bottle is 12 pounds, 12.6 ounces. I'm sorry, 24 pounds, 12.6 ounces. Well, for 10 good seconds and see what the weight difference is after we've gotten rid of some nitrous. That'll be how much our nitrous system flows. Okay, a couple things we saw right there. We were leaking out of lines here. Not everything was tight. That wouldn't work great in your motor because that will change the flow to each of these four different nozzles if one of them or two of them are leaking. Let's weigh it again. It's about 10 seconds. If we were getting technical, we'd count 10 full seconds. So now it's 24 pounds, 5.4 ounces. So we lost approximately 0.7 ounces, give or take. You'd have to measure the amount of time versus the pounds that you lost and uh, calculate it back to pounds per hour. Pounds per hour is what we measure injector flow in. So you could create and figure out how much more fuel you need to add based on how your nitrous system flows. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to do the same thing with a Neptune RTP. Uh, same OB1 ECU. Neptune RTP board, single USB cable coming up to the laptop. And similar, we go to tools, parameters. We go to outputs, output one. And if we blow up this picture so you can see everything. We have enable. We have our input, the same as uh, on the other ECU, our brake switch, our output is A20, purge control. That's a uh, low side or ground output. We have our same windows that we have to choose from, four to 8,000, our load range, our speed range, that's vehicle speed. We have a TPS setting, we have a coolant temp setting, we have an air temp setting. 
and just like the fuel and ignition adjustments that we could do with Honda, we have the same fuel and ignition adjustments that we can do here. Um, if you want to remove timing, just make sure you're typing in minus three and not plus three because it will add timing if you don't have the minus symbol in front. So when you want to remove timing, minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. want to add fuel, whatever your fuel value is that you want to add, etc, etc. Okay, same thing as before. We have an input uh, switch light to see and we have the output that tells us when our nitrous is active. So when I arm the nitrous switch, that will say on and we're resting at 5,000 RPMs. Our map is within the window. Our air temp, our cooling temp are all within the window. We're gonna change the TPS until it clicks, shows on. A little bit of nitrous left in the lines from what we were doing before. But you can see how that works. Okay, so we had some leaks before when we did our, our flow test. And uh, what I found here is that there was no uh, sealant on these fittings. So I took them all off. I put some Teflon tape on there. Teflon tape is my personal preference. Uh, a lot of people use pipe dope, which I'm not a big fan of. I've seen people put way too much pipe dope on. And it ends up clogging the solenoids, the uh, lines, the fittings, etc., etc. So now I'm going to do another spray. Uh, we're going to back up here a little bit so you can see it, but there should be no more leaks here and all of the nitrous should be coming out of the nitrous. 